work in all this heat, especially with those chains on them. Animals, boy. Don't deserve no better. You have lunch yet? Yeah. Plus a ten-minute break every hour like your pa wants. He sends you to check on me. Look, my pa's glad to let the territory put a road for the Ponderosa. He wants to make sure they're treated fair while they're working on our ranch. <laughs> yeah. I'll treat them like little lambs, boy. Tell your pa not to fret. Want a drink? No, not now. Thanks, anyway. It's a uh, nice-looking horse. Yeah, I'm just breaking him in. He's still a little bit nervous. Look at him. Clean clothes. Full belly and a fine animal to take him wherever he wants to go. That Travis. One of these days, I'm going to get him good. Yo, Kent, one more word. You do time in the hole. Thanks a lot. For what? For what? For saving my life. Not for you, friend. I just didn't want to see your horse hurt. Now, I ain't going to tell you again. Get on back to work. He will in a minute, Travis, when I get through talking to him. Well, do it quick. Look, what's your name? Kid. Danny Kid. Now, my name's Joe Cartwright. I wish there was some way I could repay you. You want to repay me, huh? <laughs> well, that's nice. That's that's real nice. Just what do you think you can do for me? Will you just try me. All right, friend. There is something you can do. Get these off of me. I appreciated the way you treated our prisoners when they were working on the road through the Ponderosa, but don't you think it's carrying it a little too far to want to free somebody like Danny Kidd? Well, Warden, we, we said we'd, we wanted to try and free him. This letter from the governor's pretty good trying. You know anything about the prisoner? Only that he saved my life. Bring him in here. We'll let him tell you about himself, and then you tell me if you still want to see him go free. You know why you're here? No. There's Mr. Ben Cartwright and his sons at the Ponderosa Ranch. They want to see you turned loose. I have a letter here from the governor granting you an amnesty. But it also needs my signature. You think I should turn you loose? You'll do what you want to do, Warden. How old are you, son? 23. How long have you been here? 10 years. Since you was 13? What'd you do? I stabbed somebody with a fork. Why? Well, he tried to steal my apple pie. Well, 
that doesn't make sense. How often do you get dessert with your meals? Almost every night. At the orphanage, they gave you to us once a month. Makes sense to you now? When did you lose your parents? I was five years old. You've been confined to state institutions all this time? That's right, Mr. Cartwright, but I don't call it confined. I, I call it caged. Warden, don't you think he's been punished enough? I understand what you're saying, but this is a prison, not a school. If I had released him, he'd have been back inside of these walls in less than a week. He has no trade, no one he can turn to. He has now. Do you know what you're letting yourself in for? He's like a wild animal. He knows nothing of honesty, decency. He may even turn on you, do you terrible harm. You sign that amnesty, Warden. He'll be my responsibility. You'll be released to Joseph Cartwright. Behave yourself for one year and you'll get a complete pardon. But get one inch out of line and you'll spend the rest of your days behind bars. Do you understand? I understand. You'll leave with the Cartwrights. Just a minute, kid. I got your possessions. All we found on you when you came here ten years ago. Hard case. Not even a thank you. Well, gentlemen, he's all yours. I wish you luck. Thank you very much, Warden, for everything. Thank now, you. Now, if you'll excuse me. Well, little brother, it looks like you've cut yourself out quite a job. Yeah. Joseph, you'll be riding back to the ranch alone with Danny. Hans and I promised Mr. Carter we'd find him a prize seed bowl. Oh, and remind Adam about the party for Carter. All right, Pa. Hey, now look. Look, and I want you to worry. Danny and I are going to get along real fine. I hope so. I certainly hope so. You've taken on a big responsibility, son. I know that, sir. Danny? I'm sorry. I don't like for anybody to come up behind me quietly. I'll remember that next time. Was there anything wrong? No, no. I couldn't sleep. Too many things to think about. Hey, you want to talk about it? The warden called me an animal. You want to know what an animal thinks about the first night out of the cage? Yeah, I'd like to hear it. What do you see out there? I don't know that I haven't seen before. 
You know what you don't see? Walls. Wherever you look, no walls. As long as I can remember, I always looked at a wall, standing up, lying down. Always there was a wall in front of me. They pressed you in, made you a small little man. time you were getting here, we'd about given you up for lost. We're going a couple of days and everybody starts to panic. The only thing that's going to panic around here is you when you find out how your back chores have piled up. Haven't you been doing my work for me? No. Adam, this is Danny Kidd. Danny, this is my older brother. Nice to know you. I do. Well, everything looks about the same. Well, they are, except for one thing. Now, see what I tell you? What's the matter? Somebody steal a South 40? No, it's Concho. Concho, what's wrong with him? He's down. Happened this morning. Tried to get him up on his feet, but he couldn't make it. It's the horse I was riding out by the bridge. Where is he now? In the barn. Let's go. Danny, come on. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Veins are all distended. The doctor looked at him this morning. He doesn't feel anything can save him. You gonna kill him? I suppose we'll have to. Why not give him a chance? We don't like to kill animals, Danny. Doesn't seem like we have any choice. Well, maybe not, but uh, I'd like to try. You ever worked on sick horses? At prison. I worked with the stock. I learned a little. It's going to take more than a little learning to save this animal. I'll do what you can. Joe? Hmm? If I cure him, can I ride him? If you cure him, you can have him. Could you use some help? Yeah, I could use a little. All right, where do we begin? Well, uh, a horse gets down, his insides stop working. First thing we got to do is get him to his feet. <laughs> That's not going to be an easy job. You got a block and tackle and a belly band? Yeah, we got one someplace. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, hook it up to that beam up there, pull him to his feet, give him enough support so he can stand, and then we'll heat up some blankets and uh, keep him warm. The rest is up to him. All right, let's get to work. So far, so good. You got a kettle big enough to boil blankets in? Yeah, back. 
Let's bring it in here. Right. How long do we keep this up? Till he gets well or dies. I think he's gonna be all right. I know he's gonna be all right. Hey, mind if I ask you a question? Ask away. I've seen men work hard for something they want. I've never seen anybody work like you. Why is it so important? Those clothes you're wearing, are yours? These? Sure they are. That gun you got, it belonged to you? Yeah. Fact is, everything you have belongs to you. Is that right? I guess so. Well, the only thing I remember that belonged to me was this. I was five years old. After that, everything I got was hand-downs and cast-offs. It was given to me, but it was never mine. Nothing was ever mine again, till now. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess it does. How's the work going? Fine. Except for getting these new duds dirty. Well, they fit pretty good. How's your horse? Oh, he's all right. He's doing just fine. Hey, look, we're having a party up at the house tonight for old man Carter. He's the one who sent horse and pie out after the bull. You gonna be there? You asking? Yeah, I'm asking. I'll be there. Okay, we'll see you later. Okay. Tell her, give a man a chance. Bob Stevens, you're one good-looking cowboy. No question about it. You're one loud cowboy, that's for sure. Well, that's confidence. A man needs confidence to make the pretties notice him. And I'm loaded with it. You ready for tonight's doings? Much as I'll ever be. Now, you just keep an eye on yours truly. Do what he does, and you'll get a pretty for yourself. I'll try to remember that. Hey, tell her, you know what I need to set me off? One of them nice, bright neckerchiefs. Why, to hide the dirt? Yes, there's something with color in it. A real eye catcher. You got a tie, tell her? No, anything I got to be too plain for you. Well, if somebody around here ought to have a good one. Maybe that new guy. Maybe he's got a flashy one I could borrow. Well, from what I've seen, he don't even have a plain one. Don't look to have much anything. I'll take a look. Well, look a here. <laughs> now, what's that? Looks like some kind of kid's toy or something, don't it? What do you know? Man his age playing with stuff like that. Put it down. I said, put it down. All right, 
all right. Don't be so touchy about it. I wasn't doing no harm. I was just looking for a neckerchief. You got a nice flashy one I could borrow? No. Not even a little old plain one? Well, you must have got some pretty poor wages at your last job. You know where I come from? Still, even in prison, you must have got something. I did. Yeah, what? An education. They taught me not to be a loudmouth. Now listen, hard case, you've been walking around with a chip on your shoulder ever since you got here. A fella that plays with dolls can't be so tough. Well, now let's see how they taught you to fight in that prison. I'm not gonna fight you. What's the matter, you yeller? Because you're not worth going back to jail for. Don't push your luck. Ah, he's full of air. <laughs> Come on, let's go find them pretties. Checking up on Concho. Oh, I'd like you to meet Ann Carter, and this is my friend Danny Kidd. Hello, Danny. You know, little Joe's been singing your praises all night. Hey, look, you, uh, you keep an eye on her for me. I want to talk to her father. He just bought a big herd from us. I want to make sure he's having a good time. Mr. Carter. Oh. How are you? Enjoying yourself? It's a fine party, Joseph. Just fine. I'm only sorry your father couldn't get back in time. You certainly are a quiet one. No wonder I hadn't heard about you. Well, I'm supposed to know all the boys for 50 miles around. Well, I, uh, I haven't been around here too long. Now, that's a shame. But, uh, I hope you'll stay around, because I think I like you, Danny kid. Oh, I do declare. I think you're blushing. Well, I'm not, not too, uh, good at socializing with girls. I don't believe that. But I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll teach you about socializing with girls. Miss Carter. We'll start with conversation later. Put your arm around me. What's that? Well, put your arm around me. For dancing, silly. Oh. Look at that, Bob. You see what I see? Yeah, I see it. Looks like they taught that old boy lots of things in prison. Oh, he's talking to a girl. But Ann Carter happens to be the prettiest girl here. She's talking to him, not you. Well, I could cut him out like a calf in a corner. Well, how come you're still standing here while she's dancing with him? You know, you ain't smart, Teller. Of course, you ask questions. And when you're smart, you got answers. Oh, that's smart boy. What's the answer? Well, look, so I go cut him out. What happens? He just comes back later. So? So a smart man cuts him out permanent. It's very nice to see old friends again, isn't it? It's something we should do more often. I think it was very nice of Ben to have this party Excuse for us. Excuse me, folks. Could I have a talk with you, Mr. Carter? Well, of course, Bob. Excuse me just a moment. What is it, son? Well, sir, if I were the father of a pretty girl like Ann, I'd be more careful with the type man she's seen with. Say what you have to say. 
But what I'm saying is, he's an ex-convict. Are you positive about this? We all know about it, Mr. Carter. Thank you, gentlemen. Ann? Dad, this is Danny Kidd. Danny, this is my father. Get your things. We're leaving. I was just beginning to have a good time. Don't question me. Do as I say. Is there something wrong, Mr. Carter? Ann and I are leaving, and right now. I don't understand. Well, I can see why the Ponderosa might hire an ex-convict. But I can't understand how you could allow him to entertain my daughter. Well, we didn't intend to keep it a secret. Just didn't think that tonight was the right time to talk about it. When my daughter's welfare is concerned, any time's the right time. Good night, gentlemen. Mr. Carter gets hot too easy. He didn't mean it. We're sorry this happened. I'd like to find out who did it. I'm about to. Just a minute. Let us take care of this. Did one of you tell Mr. Carter about Danny? You fighting his battles for him? I fight my own battles. No, not, not here, not now. We've got guests in the house. Let's try to remember it. All right, now, which one of you told Mr. Carter about Danny? Well, you know, when old Bob makes up his mind, it's kind of hard to get him to change it. Well, both of you get back to the bunkhouse. Well, I don't take orders from you. Look here, it was your dad that hired us, not you two. Pack your gear. I'll have your wages ready in 10 minutes. Might be we'll meet up sometime. Settle our differences. I think we better get back to our guests. All right, come on, everybody, let's dance. Get you some punch. Hi, Betty. Hi, Bob. Oh, boy, am I glad that's over. Well, I'm for bed. How about you guys? Oh, I think I'll have a look at Concho. Yeah, I'll go with you. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take it easy, Good night. Take him? Just watch me. You want it real bad, don't you? That's what I'm here for, little friend. And I figure I can handle you, too. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to, tell her. <laughs> Well, wait, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? I'm not gonna fight you, friend. I'm gonna kill you. You, you're trying to kill him? That's a reason for fighting, isn't it? No, it isn't. Stevens was sore, but he didn't want to kill you. In prison, you got a man down, you made sure he stayed down. If you didn't, he'd get you. A week, a month, a year, time didn't matter. One day you turn your back and he'd get you. Maybe that's the way it is in prison, but it doesn't work that way on the outside. Now, you were wrong, real wrong. I make a habit of being wrong. Maybe you were wrong in taking me out of that cage. When I think I'm wrong, I'll tell you. Welcome home. 
home, Pop. Adam said you wanted to see me. Yes, I do. Understand you had a little trouble here last night. Yeah, well, if, uh, if you mean that trouble with Mr. Carter, that was... Hmm. No, I don't mean the trouble with Mr. Carter. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I saw Mr. Carter in Virginia City earlier today. Naturally, he was concerned for Anne, but he understood what we were, you know, what we were trying to do. No, I was referring to the, uh, the trouble that came later. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you must be talking about the fight. Well, that wasn't anything. We settled that. Well, Adam tells me that uh, Danny tried to kill Bob Stevens. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, why? Did, uh, did, did Bob provoke him so much that he had to try to kill him? Well, maybe Danny thought he did. Do you think he did? No. No, not enough to kill him. Well, what do you intend doing about it? I wish I knew. Joseph. Now, you know you have the power to send him back to prison, if that's what you want to do. Look, Pa, we knew it wasn't going to be easy with Danny. He's so used to being inside in that cage where... Where people feel it's kill or be killed. It's just hard for him to get used to being with people on the outside, that's all. And you think you can get him used to being with people on the outside? Yes, I think so. I think it's going to take time, but I think I can do it. It's quite a responsibility. The kind of responsibility you can't just put on and take off like a suit of clothes. Once you accept it, it becomes part of you. Something you have to live with all your life. You understand that? Yes, sir, I understand that. Don't look so fierce. I only wanted to surprise you. What is this, anyhow? Well, it's... It's only something I carry around for luck. A doll. Seems to me a grown-up man should have. Grown-up things. Miss Carter, I don't think your dad's gonna like you being out here. My father. Papa's looking at that prize bull Mr. Cartwright brought back for him. That's all he's thinking about. What are you thinking about, Mr. Kidd? Is it true you spent all those years in jail? It's true. What was it like? If you got about ten years, I'll give you a day-by-day -day account of it. No wonder you were so awkward and shy. I bet I was the first girl you were ever with. That's right. And I bet you've never held a girl in your arms or kissed her. No, Miss Carter. I've never kissed a girl. I think I'd like to be the first. Please, stay away from me. Never had to throw myself at a man before. I've always had to push them away. Don't tell me you're afraid, Mr. Kidd. No, I'm not afraid. I promise not to struggle. Too hard. don't know anything about women, do you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had no right to do that.
Why did you have to do it? Why did you have to prove everybody else is right and I'm wrong? You just wouldn't let me help you, would you? All right, I guess I am wrong. And now I'm going to take you back. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Pack your things. We're going to leave now. Sure, friend. Whatever you say. Welcome back. How long have I been out? About an hour. Hey, it's hard. Yeah. Is he going? Yeah, he's gone. Anne came out to the pasture. She was pretty upset. Yeah, did she tell you what happened? Yeah. She said it was all her fault. She said it was her fault. She admitted she'd been teasing him pretty badly. Well, you know how she is. You're always set to go off half-cocked without hearing things out, ain't you, little brother? I should have known better. Too bad Danny isn't around to hear it. Yeah, we're gonna have to find him. There's no telling what he'll do now. Don't let me go after him. He'll listen to me. Pa, you gotta let me go. I don't have to do anything. Now, from here on in, we're in this thing together. Is that understood? And we'll get an early start. He doesn't know this country too well, so it shouldn't be too hard to find him. Come on, let's get you to bed. I just... Let me sit here for a while. Will you be all right? Are the horses ready? Yeah. Let's go. make it. Well, was I that easy to follow? Just like a herd of cows. I never had much practice. <sighs> what happens now? We go back. To the ranch or? It's not up to me now. The family will have to decide. But we know the truth about you and Ann. Do you think that'll make a difference? Yeah, I think so. We'll find out.
should have killed you back at the barn. Well, why didn't you? I let you live. I figured you'd let me live. But it didn't work out that way. for a long time, but, but you're not an animal. I'm sure you made some mistakes. You're gonna make a lot more mistakes. But you got friends to stick by you now. If you just let them. You mean proving myself to everybody I meet from now on? I'd rather go back to the cage. man has to make his own decisions. If you don't think we'll treat you fair, keep right on going the way you were. Joseph, sometimes you make me very angry. Sorry, Pa. I did what I figured I had to do. Did you find him? Yeah, I found him. You can tell that by looking at his face. Where you got him tied up, Joe? I don't have him tied up. I let him go. Well, that was pretty foolish, too, wasn't it? No, I don't think so. How come? Look, all his life, he's had people doing his thinking for him, telling him what to do. It was exactly the same with us. So I decided to let him make his decision himself. He had one more year to prove himself, and then he'd be on his own. But he couldn't even wait out that one year. So, son, you're going to ride back to the ranch, and we're going to find him. Now, look, Pa, get... Joseph! I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Now, get going. Hey, hey, Paul. Look at there. Hey, Joe! Wait a minute! I knew it, Pa. I knew it. It's kind of wonderful, Joseph. No matter how old a man gets, he can always learn something new. I offer no excuses, Mr. Cartwright, and I'll accept any decision you hand down. Well, Danny, I noticed when you left, your chores were only half done. Try to get them finished before supper. Well, Joe, uh, I believe this belongs to you. Me and my nag will race you and that flea bag back to the ranch. All right.
they go to very well, the young man. What do you mean, Paul? Well, they have something that all the money in the world can't buy. It's called friendship. <laughs> 